Okay, um, I've been asked uh, fairly often about uh, how I did realize the, the real-time rendering of the spawn model from uh, Augusto. I did some tests lately with Substance Designer and I took the new 3D render engine for spin. In this uh, short uh, show and tell video, I will then show you uh, how to achieve those type of results with no post-processing whatsoever in Substance Designer. Okay, then let's start. Um, we have the model from Augusto, which probably is around uh, 1 million polygon right now, decimated in ZBrush. Um, then I have my graph, which is not very clean at this moment, but it's not very important because that's not the purpose of this video. I don't want to show you how to create the graph, I just want to show you how to play a little bit with the viewport. Uh, we have the 3D viewport, and then we have the result of the graph. So let's try to make that a little bit bigger here. So far, so good. This is what we have in Substance Viewport. That's a very uh, basic Substance Viewport. Let me try to grab it better. So I'll try to not do the same mistake again. And I'm doing it and doing it. Let's, uh, yeah, it will be better. So we have the geometry. So far, nothing very interesting. It's very standard PBA rendering. Uh, you can drop whatever IBA you want. In my case, I did bring my own idea, so um, which is one I found online, obviously. Um, next step will be then to check what we want to do with the 3D viewport. Something that I want to mention at this point, it's like uh, a lot of people did contact me and ask me uh, if I think it's better than Marmoset or other type of rendering giant. I don't know. At this point, I think I, I'm not even sure that the purpose of this engine is to replace Marmoset. To be honest, um, the the state it is right now allows us to do a lot of rendering. I will still have to rely on Marmoset for some stuff. Maybe in the future, I will be able to do everything. Yeah. This being said, I have to mention that it's amazing what they have done in such a short amount of time, and knowing the people. Uh, behind algorithmic i mean those french people are crazy they don't wait to release a, a new feature they just release them every week basically that's probably the reason why some people or like me as an example think that the engine is not ready for prime time right now stuff are missing but the fact that i know that they are updating those feature every week i'm like i'm pretty sure in two or three weeks maybe a month down the road it will be very 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 amazing but for now, it's just amazing. Not ama very, very amazing. Okay, um, let's go. Uh, we have the 3D viewport, right? We can rotate, we can do whatever we want. Let's start with maybe um, background image to turn it on, turn it off. In my case, we want to turn it on, find a nice angle. And uh, we will start to see what we can do. We will enable the post-process effect right now they're off. I see a slight difference in color mapping and uh, we will enable a glare a glare so move those like a little bit more here it's coming together put the gradient eight uh, let's go with the trust lens custom shape lens not too much luminance I'm not going obviously for 100% what I did show you at the beginning because I did not save my, my setting. I will just be trying to do something cool. Yeah, I really love that uh, lens flare. It's a JJ Abram 100%. Uh, let's move here. A little bit of halo. Too strong, a little bit of distortion, sharpness. We can also change the shape of the glare here or there, but we will stay with the chip lens. So then we will continue here, some streak coming. The angle, I don't know if I will exaggerate them. And now you can see that I can choose my angle and maybe the strength of my luminance. So, can I 
equilibrium or luminance and more dispersion nice then we will continue with some diff top fill okay in this case the diff top fill is a little bit finicky based of the size of my object um, the size of my object let's move in automatic and start to change some stuff here as you can see it's not too good because my object is way too small or too big I don't remember exactly but I know I have some issue with my model so that's why I will go with the focus distance manually and try to find it again Not one no. first so. stuff is not really moving and uh, manual and focus distance so then we move the focus distance here somewhere we hit it and uh, let's say we want uh, the focus to be somewhere here we will reduce the size of the aperture Point one, and now we have a nice lift of field. Maybe even point zero five. So again, stuff is kind of wrong because my model is the culprit right there. My model is too small. So uh, you can do some stuff here. The quality obviously need to be raised up. The edge quality too. We will maybe enable some uh, lens distortion with a very, very subtle effect. Don't want edge roughness, edge smoothness we want. Um, not too strong, field of view. Here. Then, obviously, some vignette effect. We will remove the Lens distortion. Then we will go back to the diff of fill to make sure that our focus will be more on the face. Uh, to do that, point eight should be good. Maybe point nine. Yeah. Now exactly the face is in focus. If I rotate the face, stay in focus. Everything is the way I want it to be. Then uh, let's check what we can do with those light shafts. Way too strong. Hair ratio. Screen position a little bit here. Then let's give it uh, some red color. And the brownish here. Then the friction ring. <laughs> this one is funny. Uh, actually, so let's see. You can see here, and uh, we will obviously make it super. I'm exaggerating right now with all those effects, right? The purpose is just for you to be able to see them. Um, moving some contrast. Basically, I could play for age with this viewport. Let's move it there. Then sepia tone just a little bit and a little bit exposure down. This is very, um, those parameters are very uh, photo photometric. Basically, stuff I will be doing in Lightroom with my image. Uh, let's go here. A little bit too, too much, if you ask me. Put exposure back. So it looks mean and uh, let's add some anti-aliasing. So, as you can see, we have a quite decent regard. So as I did mention at the beginning of this, of this video, a lot of stuff are missing, right? At this point, there is no SSAO, there is no subsurface scattering, they are missing some effect that I think would be nice to have, like a lens dirt and everything. But for a first release, this is very, very impressive. 
um, let's see what happens if we change the backdrop. As you can see, all my filters are still working. Obviously, some image will work better than other. Uh, let's go back here and see what happens if we rotate. <coughs> Excuse me, the background. Yes, you can see it exactly here. All of those lens flare are freaking amazing. So, as I didn't mention before, I did exaggerate those effects to make sure that we can see them in the viewport. Here, you can see them even more. Um, let's grab here elevator corridor. It's nice, too much, and maybe a small apartment. Quite nice. Oh, urban exploring. Anyway, um, this is the end of this short video. Again, the purpose was just to show you how I did that uh, specific image. Um, I'm still using Marmoset. I still plan to use it because at this point, this 3D viewport from Substance is not ready to replace it in my workflow. This being said, it's freaking amazing to be able to just stay in Substance and do 95% of my work there and go close as close as possible to my final rendering. Anyway, I hope it, you did have fun and it was informative. And at some point later, I will show you some substance workflow and how I do some of my texturing.